Hey everybody, welcome to part two of our conversation of hope. I cannot wait for you guys to see the rest of this conversation we had. My my goodness, I'm so excited. Um, I uh, I can't. I don't even have words how excited I am for you guys to see this um, second part of the conversation of hope we had with Mike Kahn and Pastor David. Um, guys, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it I, so much. Um, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even have anything else to say. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe and comment. And make sure you turn that notification bell on too so you get notified when we post. So yeah, grab a notebook. Grab your Bible. Sit down with your family, with your kids, and just listen to this conversation of hope. I mean, we are in, we are in a hopeless world in a lot of ways. There's hope that we need, and our hope is in Jesus. And and man, I he has so much hope to give, and it's it's amazing. So yeah, y'all go ahead and get your stuff situated, and let's get started with this conversation. I'm glad that y'all kind of had that conversation because that was one of the questions that I had on here. Um, it was talking about the darkness and the chaos when you brought that up. Um, how how to have hope in that. So now I, me personally, this past few years, I've lost hope and I've been struggling with hope. That's why I was kind of scared of this conversation. Like, not to lie, I was very nervous about this conversation because I felt like I haven't had hope in a while. And I feel like this, y'all are just talking to me. So, and if anybody else gets this, it's for me. Um, So you kind of talked about it a little bit. I want you to more elaborate on it. Like, how do you hold on to hope when you have no hope left or no hope to give? I think uh, if you're talking about hanging on to hope, uh, at first you have to probably sit down with someone to develop uh, a plan to to hold to have hope in the first place. So mm-hmm. if you don't have that initial plan or be able to sit down with someone and say, hey, here's some here's some small goal steps that you can take or small steps to get to the goal uh, of that, 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 that helps, I think, with people. And again, when you're in the middle of the storm, when you're in the middle of the chaos, it's hard to see beyond that. Mm-hmm. It's hard to see beyond the chaos. It's hard to see beyond the storm. And that's why it's so important that we need one another yeah. to go to someone and say, hey, I, I feel like I don't have any hope right now. Mm-hmm. And and I, I sure, if I don't have it, I can't hang on to it. So I need you to help me to maybe, I can't see beyond this. Yeah. Maybe you can help me see beyond this. So we need one another. So um, I would say get with someone. You know, mm-hmm. get with someone you trust, a friend that you trust that can, a pastor, whoever that may be, counselor, whoever that may be, that you go and speak to and say, I need some direction in this area of my life, and, and I, I can't see beyond it right now mm-hmm. because of either the trauma, the issues you're going through, the, the overwhelm. You're being overwhelmed many times. When you get overwhelmed, you just don't think right or see clearly about things. And so I think getting with someone to help you identify that would help you to hang yeah. on to hope. I can definitely say that I had a few ladies throughout this past year in the church that have messaged me, didn't realize what I was facing inside, and that gave me hope. And that, that's why I like that you brought that out is having people to talk to. I'm one of those people that's not going to ask for help, which is a bad thing. I don't need to do that. But having people that reach out or even you reaching out, if you're strong enough, I'm not at the moment, but I'm still working on it. Yes. But having having those people to speak into you. And if, if you are that person that's speaking into people, don't be afraid to message them right. and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Um you know, sometimes I get that tug that I'm like, oh, I need to text this person. And I'm like, no, I'm not good enough. You know, don't let that stop you. It's kind of a good point. Good I think point. that's a fabulous point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I, I think the, the way you come at it depends on the history you have. You know, mm-hmm. if you have a history Absolutely. with God, yeah. then you come to your hope and you're like, okay, I can hang on to this because, you know, I, I keep a journal. Uh, I don't keep it all the time but i have these these spiral notebooks they fit you know they, they just fit like in your bible and mm-hmm. everything and yeah i've got this one i've probably got i don't know i've got these in a little backpack i have in my office and it's i just write down quiet time and private worship like i'll do some prayers and i'll write down some stuff if i feel like god is speaking to me mm-hmm. the god who created the universe and he breathed the stars into place and he knows how many hairs are on my head and mm-hmm. every word i'm going to say before it gets to the tip of my tongue that god when i feel like he's talking to me i try to write it down yeah. in my own handwriting 
because I, I mean I can t- I can point to the journal I was having one of those times at a park in Oklahoma City where I really believe God was calling me to children's ministry. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, children's ministry is for youth ministers who can't do it. <laughs> like that's what I thought. <laughs> and I, you can read it in my own handwriting. Mm-hmm. And then it's like that same God who I have this history with. It's like he put his hand on my shoulder. Like, I'm choosing you to go to these short people. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so now, even if I do feel like the voices are, uh, like the Holy Spirit is faint and like God's like, he's, he might be talking, but I've got too much uh, static to hear him. I know I can go back to that because it's in my own handwriting. Or I'm a big fan of voice memo, a voice memo app on your phone. So mm-hmm. I can say, I really feel like God spoke to me about this one thing. And then I've got it in my own words, in my own voice. So when I feel like I, I'm not holding on to anything right now, I can go back and remember, yeah. you really did. There was a time mm-hmm. where you, Mike, really did believe this. And... Um, it's a it's a remembering. Um, I think it, I mean I love professional development, personal development. I love reading books, listening to podcasts, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I also think probably my best coach is Mike because I I I know um, most of the time we don't coach ourselves up; we whine to ourselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm speaking for you. That's how it is for me. <laughs> um, and to be able to say, okay, what would I say to what would I say to Mike? If Mike came to me with all these doubts as the coach, what would I say to Mike? If, I, if he came to me and I was pastor, what would I say to Mike? So for you to say, man, I, I feel however I feel. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I'm not good for ask, I'm good at asking for help, but I'm working on it. I would say you're, you're working on it. Like don't put yourself in that, well, that's not what I do. Yeah. There's this, this fine line between being aware of who we are and then being like, like mm-hmm. I've got a tendency to go Debbie Downer yeah. on Mike, and so I think what you're saying—I mean, what you're saying to me—is really helpful and encouraging to me to say, "Hey, listen, coach, and I don't mean you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And that's that's not what any of this conversation is about, yeah. and it's not the science of hope. I mean, when you're talking about it, David having a having a goal and a breakdown, like the sci- like the 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 plan to get. <laughs> to help people with the science of hope, it's to identify a goal, then what's the pathway, mm-hmm. and then what willpower do you have? Mm-hmm. But the goal is not hope. The goal is wellness. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing for us. We get so caught up in the in the symptoms. And for me personally, like I like to solve problems. Yeah. And if I can help be a, be a part of a solution to a problem, then I know, okay, I got a clear target. I know where I'm going. But... But there are times when I get so intent on solving the problem that I don't see the person. And mm-hmm. that's where I'm like, hey, Jesus, man, please don't let me. Protect protect me from Mike. Protect them from just Mike with no Jesus. And that's when I'm like, hey, I, 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 I want to. I have faith in you. I trust in you. And I rely on you. Yeah. And it's very difficult to transfer that hope to someone else. When you feel like you don't have it at the moment, yeah. yeah, and I think that's a that's when it takes courage. And I, I love that you said there were some nice ladies in the church who mm-hmm. didn't even really know what was going on with you, but they took yeah. time to message you or text you or however they mm-hmm. let you know. I mean, you didn't you, you didn't say it the way I heard it. The way mm-hmm. I heard it was they helped you feel seen and feel valued. Right, yeah. and I think that's absolutely so yeah. awesome. Yeah, I love that you what you said about that. That many times. Um, and this is as a pastor. Meantime, we we try to come up with the solution of the situation without seeing the people, mm. and that is so powerful because that that is true. We 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 get caught up many times of trying to come up with the plan, trying to come up with all these things that we don't uh, have the willpower support to help these people be seen in the midst of that. And and I thought that was really uh, powerful what you said in that area. Because that, that's true. It, we want to fix it. You know, even as husbands, many times we're in that place too. We want to fix it. Let's just fix it. You know, and it's just kind of a quick, it's not a, it's not a long-term fix. It's like, how quick can we fix it uh, many times? And uh, that, that's a bad, uh, I think, rut to get into 
uh, with the way we view things. And if we, it's called slowing down and seeing people. And, and our culture is a very fast paced. And I know we live in Oklahoma mm-hmm. and we're not near as fast paced as other people. We have people moving in from all over the country right now. And they're like, man, we love Oklahoma. This is such a slow paced <laughs> place. We love it, man. It's just laid back. And I'm like, well, man, it sure seems fast to me <laughs> right now. Sure. You know, and I think we're in such a world, a culture that everything is instant. You know, it's just quick, quick, quick. Yeah. And we've moved into that place in our culture where we're not slowing down, I think, even as individuals to see people and so I think it's important that we take the time and you can't do that with everybody if you're doing that with everybody you're going to be you're going to be tied up for uh, a lot you know with different things so there's there's groups of people that you can have in your life that you can look at and say hey these are these are my clan these are my people that I can trust and you know Jesus had that he had his three you know, he has three inner circle guys. You know, he had the 12 that was following and going. You know, then he sent out 72. There was, there was a whole bunch of people that he was involved with of, of doing ministry. Uh, but there was three guys that he really hung out with all the time. That I, He asked them, say, hey, won't you come to the garden with me? Yeah. Yeah. That, was a, that was a very private moment in Jesus' life. And so we need at times maybe one or two or three, whatever it is, invite them along to those private moments in your life to say, hey, this is where I need some help at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's community. Yes. I mean, it's, and, and, you know, I mean, I think that's what's so powerful about it is it doesn't have to be, um, come, come with us, come and be with us. It's a, be who you are. There's a place for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, I mean, there, uh, the, the times in my life where I have not had the community or I felt like it, this, the silence was deafening. And I think the church, we the church, now of course I get to speak a little bit more freely about the church because I don't, I don't work at a church anymore. Um, but that doesn't mean I hate the church. I love the church and who the church is supposed to be. But there have been so many times where I didn't look to see what I needed to do to serve someone, but I looked to see what do they expect from me. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, I wasn't solving the problem and I wasn't being Mike. And, and that, man, golly, like if I could, if I could give, um, you know, 1996 Mike, 19-year-old Mike, <laughs> but I'm a Dr. Pepper with no ice uh, and, you know, bottle of water. Uh, if I could talk to that dude and give him one piece of advice, it would be to remember who you are and whose you are mm-hmm. and not let that be dictated what you do by um, hoops that people put in front of you. Because I got this, uh, I'm not going to call it a God complex, maybe hero ball. You know, I, one of my favorite basketball players is Russell Westbrook. And I, I, lo- I mean, MVP and then, you know, side of the backboard, like whatever. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> a big fan of Russ. But, but sometimes I think like I think he thinks. And I feel like, oh my gosh, this all depends entirely on me. And what you just said when people say, Man, I, you know, I, I, Pastor, do you have a minute? Can I talk to you? Uh, on the outside, you're like, I can't tell him no, but on the inside, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have this kind of time. Mm-hmm. I love Andy Stanley and what he says about going deep with people. He says, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Mm-hmm. And then someone else will do for one a different one. And then it doesn't feel like it all comes back to me to solve everybody's problem. And I think that's, so now Now that's dependence on God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, of course. It's also depending on other people on our team and our church and our community to grab the rope and pull. Like, like and if you can't pull right now, that's fine. Go, go rest. But when you can, get back in because we need you. Mm-hmm. Right. That reminds me of a, a sermon that you talked about. I think it was you or your dad. I cannot remember. I'm sorry. About the the birds flying in a V. Yeah, that's and dad, the, the dad preached that. Yeah. Yes. And the the lead bird when it gets tired comes to the back and the next one steps in. That's that kind of just popped in my head. That yeah, kind of yeah. reminds me of that. And that's a great picture of the church and who we're supposed to be. Because even the founding pastor can't be all things to all people. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And everyone else who's on staff, they got same last name, different last name, whatever. Mm-hmm. You can't be all things to everybody. But we think that's how we that's how we give hope to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's by solving their problems. And, and let me let me rephrase that. I 
have thought. Maybe I'm the only one. I have thought, well, that's how I can help people. It's by solving their problems. But I also know that I'm an Enneagram too. I'm a helper. Mm -hmm. And when I'm a healthy too, it's like, oh, let me help. I'm happy to help you. <laughs> when I'm an unhealthy too, I crowd your personal space and say, let me help you. <laughs> and when I'm a stressed out too, then I take on the worst characteristics of an entirely different type. I lose my empathy. I lose my compassion. And I go straight to just the information, which is not bad in and of itself. Right. But I get angry eyebrows and I'm just trying to get the thing done because I feel all this pressure. And when I'm in that space that I'm not being who God created me to be, mm -hmm. I'm being a really bad version of a different type of person. And that's when I've got to go back to my history of hope that I have with God. And say, hey, I don't know how we got here, but I need you and then, of course, then it's Toby Maxon, right? Like, then it's, then it all, you know, all, all, all finding Nemo, all drains lead to the ocean. Like, for me, it all comes back to music. One, <laughs> and one way or the other, it's different songs we'll for different line. times. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I think we get along so well. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, I think it's, I think it's a fabulous conversation to have, and most people don't have it because we're afraid of what it could be and what might be required of me. So I, yeah. uh, I think, I mean, I, I applaud you for having the questions and then saying, hey, I don't know how it's going to go. I'm going to the shirt, going to have his sleeves rolled up and drinking his water. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go yeah, there. Yeah, we're so. going to talk about it. Yeah, that's really good. I'm, this conversation is really good, just for me, anyway. Uh, so I have one more question. It's kind of a deeper question, so I might take a minute to think about it if you want to. Um, so I've heard people say that how can we put our hope in someone that we cannot see? That is a deep one, and, and that's a, I think a question that a lot of people ask. Mm -hmm. You know how, you know, and that goes back to our Christian faith. Yeah. You know, of, of believing uh, and having faith in God that uh, that uh, we cannot see Him, but we see the evidence of Him everywhere. Mm -hmm. The evidence of everything that that we live and exist and breathe and all these different things that we do in life is the evidence of, of a Creator, and and then we have those moments. As Mike said earlier, that uh, you're sitting in the park mm -hmm. and you have that moment where you go, okay, this is the God of, of creation that's speaking to me right now. Yeah. And how does he have time to do that? You know, but he had the time to to speak to me at this moment, at this time. And, and, and it's just, it's, it's at that point that you're like, this can be nothing but God. This, this one of those moments in your life, this is, can, can be nothing but God. God and I think we've had the, those moments and most people have probably had some of these moments in their life and they may have pushed it off to something else but I, I challenge you to lean into that lean into that moment where you say okay this is this is God and I've had those moments in my life I, uh, in a college dorm room uh, several years ago I really felt you know at a young age I felt the call of God on my life to speak and minister and, and thought that was what I was going to do and then I kind of ran from that in my teenage years um, went off to college, was going to go into a total different area of, of uh, vocation. And, and uh, I had one of those God moments uh, with that. And, and it really changed my, my whole life of, of how to, where I was going to go. And it was just, it was a pathway. You know, he's talking about pathways. It was the pathway. This is, this is the direction I want you to go in your life. And I, I've had to have a lot of willpower, a lot of support, a lot of friends, a lot of people to, to help me along the way. Uh, to even get into those places, but uh, yeah, hope is hope is uh, is powerful in that sense, and it's I know it's hard to believe and have hope in in something that you cannot see, and uh, that's very difficult when you think about that. But the Bible said, "Blessed are those that believe that cannot even see me." Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, you know, he said those that those folks, man, they they've got it going on. You know, you guys, he was talking with his disciples at that time. He said, "You guys, y'all see me." Y'all have walked with me, but but blessed are those that do not see me and and the the the, the prize that's waiting for them, you know, uh, which is going to be awesome. And uh, that that even gives us hope yeah. to think that there is a future that we there's that God has created a heaven for us. God has created a place for us that that's that's not I don't know if you could say it's the end goal, but it's sure a big 
big goal to get there, you know, mm-hmm. and so that's a good pathway that I've got to make it to heaven. You know, that's my that's my goal in life. And so, um, but I think that maybe give you some information on that, hopefully. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I th- and I think I would end up at the same place. I would ask a question uh, to start with, because I, I work backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask, I would ask whoever I'm talking with a question, have you ever, have you ever believed in something that you didn't see before? And then mm-hmm. I would take a drink of water and shut up and let them talk. Yeah. And if they say no, especially in Oklahoma, like we would talk about the wind and mm. kind of what you were just talking about. I, 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 my tendency, if I, if I'm not careful is just to say exactly what I think. It doesn't always work out well. <laughs> like, so, so for me, what I would rather do when someone says, Hey, I, I don't know, whatever this hope ambassador of hope, stuff whatever that is that you're talking about like i don't know anything about it mm-hmm. and how do you put your faith in this god that you never see i would ask not to not to i mean i love lawyer shows like not to make a case against them but to help them realize we're on the same we're in the same situation um and and you've also already put your faith in some you've already trusted it was an extra can of hairspray. Like you already mm-hmm. trusted in the wind that was going to blow on the outside wedding or whatever. Like yeah. you've already put your trust in something. You already planned around it. Mm, that's good. Um, so instead of me trying to convince you of my way of thinking, you've already done this. Mm-hmm. Why did you do that? Oh well, because I don't want my hair to look like Dumb and Dumber, like or whatever. <laughs> like, well, yeah. well, well, I, now I'm only thinking of Jim Carrey movies. I mean, <laughs> detective. Like I don't want it to look like any of that. Okay, okay, so you had a reason of why you didn't want it to be that way. Mm. And, and really, where I think I, I have done a poor job in the past is I've made it an either-or situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially, especially when we're talking about something that's so important. Mm-hmm. I don't want to make it either-or. And I also don't mean like there are a million ways to heaven. I, that is the end goal, for sure, the relationship with Jesus, for sure, is the end goal, um, but the hard part for me is, um, you know, ministry like in parenting is not landscaping. Whereas in landscaping, like you can go to a, a vacant lot for eight months this time of year, grass is up to your knee or whatever, and it's going to take you a long time with my twenty-one inch blade push mower <laughs> to, to get that mowed down. It's going to take a while, but even after a day or two days or however long it takes, you'll be able to see the fruit of what you just did. Yeah. But with parenting and with following Jesus and certainly in ministry, that's not the gratification that we get. That's a long-term. Um, it's a long-term play and really having conversations and I don't want to say anything in this first conversation that would keep us from having another conversation and then mm-hmm. another conversation because just because pastor David and I can have a conversation because we have this history and he's bringing Jesus into it. Plus we have this common ground with that too. But where I've me- messed it up in the past is to uh, just tell him, Hey, we should come over here. The water's great. Of course you can. I mean, you can have faith in this chair you're sitting in. Yeah, you can see it. But you can also have faith in this God. You know, instead of helping them feel seen, I just thought, well, this is the easy answer. Why do you not get? Mm-hmm. I didn't hope I never said it quite like that. But, yeah. mm-hmm. but I know that I have a tendency to do that. And I think the church a lot of times has a tendency to do that. So when you're in a, like, take a bottle of water <laughs> when you're in a conversation. <laughs> Ask, answer a question with a question, not to, not like the Pharisees. Well, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? <laughs> not that. Yeah. But that if we're not careful, that's what we, the church, are known for. Yeah. Instead, it's like a, a a gotcha instead of a community thing. So I mean, I I could, I really could talk. A long, long time about this. I know you're shocked by it. <laughs> we need to have a part two and bring Kim mm-hmm. too. We invited Kim to, to be on this podcast and Kim oh, uh, Whaley, and she'd be great to she'd come great. and be a part of this uh, uh, as well. She's some conflicting issues. She couldn't be here today. 
uh, for this. But hopefully in the future we can bring her yeah. back too and we can continue a conversation yeah. uh, with this hope. So yeah. it'd be great. Because it, it's 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 powerful. Yeah. yeah. It's powerful. There's a hope. there's a lot to it that yes. we didn't get to today. I think right. that we could definitely unpack. Did you have a bunch of more questions you're just gonna ask us? Maybe. <laughs> She's like, mm. I don't know. I don't know if I want to ask any more questions. I feel kind of called out today, but that's okay. Um, but thank you guys for coming today and answering all my questions. And you're welcome. I do have a question for you, if it's okay. It's probably not on your paper. Okay, but that's fine. um, you said that you don't like pineapple on your pizza. What kind of pizza do you like? Um, pepperoni or any with the the meats. Okay. <laughs> Like a three meat. meat. Nice. Yeah. I'm a meat lover's guy. Yeah. yeah. Bacon. What kind of, me too. What kind of sauce though? Like you want the marinara or the Alfredo sauce? I want light marinara, not very much. I don't like very much sauce. All right. Well, you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you if, it depends on what the meat is. If it's pepperoni, all that, light mar, 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 How do you say marinara. it? Marinara. <laughs> marinara. 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 <laughs> Excuse me, uh, you folks that's watching this. But <laughs> uh, that I like the light with you on that. But mm-hmm. if it's chicken, I like Alfredo. Yeah, I do like Alfredo with chicken. On it. So, fantastic. I, or I, I wasn't thinking about that the whole time. Time. Like, well, I, I gotta find out Addie's pizza. I can't yeah. that. But uh, thanks good for, conversation. Thanks for bringing it back around. <laughs> yeah. Do y'all want to close us out in prayer for today? Somebody? Absolutely. Mike, you want to close us in prayer today? I'd be honored to. Father, we thank you so much for today. God, I thank you for this opportunity to have a great conversation about you and about hope. And sometimes we forget every human was created in your image. And you are for everybody. Um, does that mean you're always pleased with my choices? No. But you never give up on me. And there's so many songs, so many scriptures that point to that and reinforce that. And so I, I thank you so much for that. And for, for the one or for the ones who are listening or watching and they feel like hope is elusive right now or, or like it's so far away and they can't get it. God, I pray that you would speak their language and and the same way you did with Addie, where you sent some nice folks in the church who knew her to say, hey, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about you, I'm praying for you. However you choose to do that, I'm not trying to give you advice on that. I just pray that you would help people who um, feel like I felt like the hope, the light was flickering, and it was really, really dim, and I didn't really know what to do next, how you spoke my language in that situation, you brought people who reminded me of who you are and I pray that you would take this conversation you know as bread and fish and and we just offer our time and and we want you to do amazing things that only you can get the praise and the glory for and and I thank you for Faith Church and for the way they've ministered to me and my family for uh, I mean for for Addie and for for David and for Tyler and for uh, you know all the folks who come and worship together here. God, I pray that you would just continue to use them and, and refuel them. And uh, I know it's it's a busy time of year. It's always a busy time of year in the church. And I pray that they wouldn't grow weary in doing good. And I pray that you would refill their tanks emotionally, spiritually. I pray for lots of fun conversations, lots of joy. And I pray that hope would be um, central to what we do here, what we do with you, and the way that we conduct ourselves outside of here. Help us not to be um, someone who professes you, but then our actions are far from you. I pray, Father, that you would help us to um, be your hands and feet and your voice and, um, you know, your arms and hug people and all these different things that people need. in a way that you (laughs) in a way that you prompt us to because you know the needs of the person we're talking to help us to obey you father and we ask you to get all the praise and all the glory in jesus name we pray Amen. amen